Earlier this week, I got a prop for you this morning. Earlier this week, uh, I was getting out of the car with my son, and I had my work bag. This is what I have my work stuff in. It usually has my laptop, maybe a couple of books, uh, some other things. It's got some weight to it. But as we were getting out of the car, I took my bag out of the back, and my son got out. You saw him run up here. And I just put it on his shoulders, and I set it on him. I was like, hey, buddy, can you carry this up to the house for me? And he just went, oh. Just like that. It's not too heavy, but it was heavy for him. And I went around the other side of the car. I had to pick something out from that side. And I expected to see him maybe halfway up the driveway or up the steps. But I looked over and he was still exactly where I put the bag on his shoulders. And he was kind of stumbling. And he was like walking backwards. And he was kind of back and forth. And he was trying to figure out how to handle and negotiate this new weight that was on his shoulders. And I encouraged him. I said, buddy, you can do this. Let's go. Let's walk. And he went up the driveway, and then he struggled up the steps the whole way, trying to negotiate what was on his back, trying to figure it out and trying to work through this very real struggle in his life. He made it up the steps, um, and we'll get to the, the rest of it in a bit. But as, as I thought about this image of a burden on his back, the weight on his shoulders, it, it fit very well with what Jesus is saying here in Matthew chapter 11. And he speaks directly and with purpose as he addresses the people around him. He's speaking, and it's important to note who he's speaking to. He has his disciples, yes. There's also Pharisees, there's teachers of the law, there's Israelites, there's a, a, a vast uh, variety of people that he's speaking to. And they're dealing with some of the struggles and some of the things that weigh them down. And he continually speaks to the reality that is at work with the Pharisees, with the teachers of the law, people who have grown up knowing the law and trying to live their lives by it. People who have set their life based on rules and regulations, trying to live up to a standard. And this is what got Jesus in trouble a lot, right? It wasn't necessarily when he was talking to someone else, but it was when he was addressing the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, that they got their backs up and he started to feel like he was being attacked, because they felt like they were being attacked. But Jesus is trying to communicate to them that he is the fulfillment of these things, and they're not too pleased with it. In fact, you can see the harsh words of judgment that Jesus lays out. If you look just before this in verses 20 to 24, there are some pretty harsh words that Jesus says to a few of the towns and the cities that he has just visited. He's performed some miracles, he's been teaching and he's recognized that some people have not accepted it. People have rejected it. And he says, woe to these cities. They have not repented. So he addresses these things in verse 25. It's interesting that he makes this transition from judgment and these harsh words to praising God. It's a bit of an awkward transition as we think about what's going on. But he's, he's, he's drawing out exactly what he just said. He says there are these wise and learned people that God has hidden these things from. These wise and learned people are those who just saw the miracles of Jesus, those who just heard him teach, those who witnessed everything. They're wise because they have seen what Jesus does, the words that he's preached, the way that he lives. And yet, they have stubbornly refused to believe. And the other side of that, he says, God, you have chosen to reveal these things, these miracles, these teachings, my life, Jesus says, to little children. There's an innocence, there's a vulnerability, there's a humility and a trust for those who have believed and, and have repented. So Jesus said God is pleased to reveal this. And I, I would say that God would hope that we are all like children. At some point, we all have faith like a child and we'll believe in him as we see his miracles, as we see his work in our life. I wonder, have you ever been given the opportunity to
to receive something, maybe receive help, uh, but you decided to refuse it or you decided to just slough it off. I know there are times that I can look into my life that I've done that. It could be small things. I remember a time I was in an Awana program, an Awana program as a child, where we memorized scripture, but part of it at the end was what we called the Awana Grand Prix. Anybody familiar with this? You build little wooden cars. They have little plastic wheels with a metal axle. You've got to put weight in it so it goes fast, and it's a race. It's a Grand Prix. They're race cars. And they have this little course that you go down. And I remember one event particularly. A gentleman came up to me and he said, hey, I have some, I have some grease for your wheels. Do you want me to spray them? It makes them go faster. And I said, no, no, that's okay. It's all right. I think I'm good. I lost that race. I don't, okay, it's probably not because I refused that. But, well, my sister accepted it and she won her race, so maybe it is. But, but nonetheless, I had this opportunity to receive some help and I don't know what it was that caused me to refuse it. Maybe I felt like I had it all together and my car was going to win no matter what. But there was something in me that said, no, I don't, I don't need your help. And I refused it. I don't know if there is something in your life um, that you can point out, that you can think, yeah, there was that opportunity that I, that I refused something. could be simple, but I know that there are, are larger things, bigger things in life, that at times pride gets in the way, or independence, or feeling like um, maybe we're superior to it or something. A variety of reasons. But Jesus says, there are people here now that you have seen miracles, you have heard me teach, and yet you have decided to reject it. Verse 26, Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. God, in his infinite wisdom, reveals himself to people as he would like in his time. It's hard for us to understand, uh, but that's who God is. And as we open ourselves like a child and and as as we allow ourselves to have faith, God reveals and opens our minds to him. Jesus transitions and and he's bringing this around because it seems a little bit harsh and it seems a little bit um, difficult for us to, to understand. At least it does for me. But he's bringing it around because he's coming to an invitation. But before he gets to that invitation, he declares his authority to bring this invitation. You've seen it probably in other passages that Jesus has said he's the bread of life or he is, has life-giving water. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is stating his authority here in these next couple of verses, in this next verse, verse 27. He says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Jesus is God's Son. If you remember the moment when Jesus was baptized, a dove descends upon him, and we hear these words of God, This is my Son. With him I am well pleased. Jesus is bringing that back around, and he's saying, I am God's Son. I am the Son of God. I have a deep connection to God. And because of that, he has given me the authority to live this life, to to show and to demonstrate his power and this journey to the cross this fulfillment of the law, this fulfillment of all that God has promised, God has given to Jesus, and he lives it out in the world around him. He sets the stage and he says, I have been given this authority. And although there are people around him, even some of his disciples, I'm sure, who, who struggle with this um, rules and the regulations, what they've been, been taught and what they've learned, what they witness in the lives of the Pharisees and the other teachers of the law, this this rigid life of rules and regulations, as they struggle through that, as they work to deal with it, Jesus says, I am the fulfillment of this. I have a new way. There is another way. It's from God. God has given it to me and it's in relationship with me. And he extends that invitation. He says, come to me. He makes it personal, right? He doesn't say, here, read this book doesn't say, Here, here's a new set of rules. Here's some other regulations that you should do as well. No, he says, come to me. He says, I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with, me, with you. So come to me. There's a connection 
when you take that first step to accept his truth. He recognizes, though, that it's not simple, that it's not always easy, right? The people that are around him, the people he's talking to, he can see that there's some weariness, that there's burdens in their life. And perhaps it's this dealing with the law, dealing with the rules and regulations around them, trying to meet this standard that is so difficult. But he recognizes that there is some tiredness, that they're weary, that life has gotten them tired, and that there is a heavy weight on their shoulders, that they're burdened, that they're weighed down. And in fact, burden would also draw up this imagery and these memories and the stories and the knowledge of what they knew happened to their ancestors, this slavery in Egypt, being oppressed by foreign nations throughout their history. All of these are burdens on their life. And Jesus recognizes that coming to him, right, the invitation to come to me, isn't just a simple decision. It's not like going to a grocery store and deciding what you want to eat for supper. It's not as easy as going to a store and maybe doing some market research and comparison, price comparisons, trying to find out what's the best value. It's not, it's not like that. It's not that easy. He says, I know there's stuff in our lives that gets in the way. So this invitation, although it seems simple, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, it's not, it's not simple because it requires us to give something up. As my, as my son, you remember him walking up the steps? As he took his final step, he did make it all the way up the steps. There's only maybe six or seven steps. Uh, but he made it up, and as he took that last step into the doorway of our house, I reached down and I grabbed this handle right here, and I just lifted the weight off his shoulders, because he was in the house. And he let out this massive sigh of relief. It was like, oh, right? maybe a little dramatic, but, but, it, but it, it, it's telling, right? That there was this weight, there was this heaviness that he felt. And when it was lifted off his shoulders, there was relief, there was rest, which is what Jesus is offering here. He's saying, I will give you rest. It's perhaps not a complete image. This image of, of me taking the weight off his shoulders isn't a complete image of what Jesus is saying. Because he's not saying, I'll just take off your burden and you're good to go. He says, I want to replace it with something. He says, I want to replace your burden with something that is manageable. Something that you can handle. Something that you'll be able to carry. Verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He says, I have a life for you. I want to replace this burden with a relationship, with discipleship, with knowing more and more of who you are, and in return, we know more and more of who Jesus is. It's here that we see that Jesus offers life. He offers a new life and the responsibility of getting to know him. As he speaks about his yoke, this connection with God, this relationship with God. It's about getting to know him. That's truly what, if you hear the word discipleship, it's getting to know Christ, walking with him, learning from him. And it's here that we are freed from the trappings of life, right? Maybe these rules and the regulations as, as the people would have been hearing him, some of his disciples who have already believed and have given their lives to him have, have given up these rules and regulations, being trapped under those, that heaviness, being free to live in his rest, to finding comfort and safety in God and also knowing that he brings a satisfaction to who we are, to our souls. And he turns the load that we're carrying into something manageable. One of the commentators that I read put it this way. He said, rather, our relationship with Jesus, ours is an intimate relationship with the one who calls, come to me and learn from me. As complicated as life may become, discipleship is at the heart of simply, discipleship is at the heart simply walking with Jesus in the real world and having him teach us moment by moment to live life his way. So Jesus invites those who are listening to him to come to him and to learn from him, 
to learn who he is, to learn these characteristics of gentleness and being humble in heart. And he says, come to me and learn from me and you will find rest for your souls. Again, this rest, this safety, this comfort, this feeling of satisfaction that we can only find in Jesus. He's the end point in our destination, of our destiny. He's our destination, the end point of this journey to finding satisfaction. So it seems contradictory, perhaps, for, for the last verse, for it to be, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is what Jesus says as he concludes. This is, these are his words that, you know, as we take his yoke upon us, as we learn from him, as we walk in relationship with him, that it's easy, that it's light seems perhaps to be a contradiction that Jesus would put this on us, this relationship, this discipleship. It seems a little bit interesting that he would say that it's easy and light. But if we take it, if we take it back a step and we think about what Jesus is offering here, I think it makes, it makes sense. Because he's not asking us to follow something. He's not asking us to do specific things. He's asking us to just live in relationship with Him. To just follow Him, right? In every moment of every day, to give our lives to Him. To relinquish our burdens, to set aside our weariness and our tiredness, and to find life and hope and peace in Him. So in that sense, it does sound a little easy, doesn't it? Just get to know Jesus. We know that it's not that easy because life still happens. So where are we in all of this? I can read this passage and I can see Jesus speaking to to people who have this reality of of fighting against rules and regulations, um, dealing with um, these questions of do I give this up? This is all I know in life. Do I give this up for what Jesus is calling me to? I can, I can read that and I can see that here. And Jesus made this invitation and offered this invitation that many years ago, but he offers the same invitation to us this morning. We may not be dealing with exactly what his disciples and, and the teachers of the law and the people he was talking to were dealing with, but we know that there are things that get us tired in life. Right? There are burdens. There are things that weigh us down. So what is it that is weighing you down this morning? What is it that has you weary? And maybe you're not this morning, uh, but maybe you are. The reality of life is that, unfortunately, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what will happen between now and next Sunday. So perhaps when you heard me say that I'm going to be preaching from Matthew 11, 25 to 30, and you read these verses, you said, oh, that's familiar. I've heard that before. I know that one. I think it's an important reminder for us continually because if we're not experiencing tiredness now, if we're not experiencing a burden now, we might tomorrow. We don't know. We might in a month from now or in a year from now. And Jesus continually offers that same invitation no matter what we face or what's going on. He offers that invitation for us to come to him if we're weary, if we're burdened. And he will give us rest. He will give you rest. Perhaps you are feeling tired this morning. Perhaps there's a burden that you carry. Whether it's worry or pain, anxiety and stress, or physical hurt and sickness. Maybe relationships or... The list can go on. And I won't attempt to cover everything. Because each of our journeys is specific and unique And it's diverse what we deal with. But in that, we know that God is just as diverse in his ability to respond or even more diverse to respond to what it is that we're carrying. And his invitation is the same. That as we come to him, weary and burdened, he will give us rest. He will give you rest for your soul. If you feel tortured and and full of anxiety and stress, he wants to lift that and make it manageable. He wants to speak into your life where there's hurt and where there's trouble and he wants to make it manageable because that's who our God is. He's gentle and he's humble in heart 
and he wants to meet you where you are. And he will meet you exactly where you are. So this image of my son carrying something that is too heavy for him, struggling under this weight, is not God's design for those who follow him. That's not how he wants us to live. He wants to be the one that reaches down and pulls that handle on the back and lifts the weight. He wants to be that in your life. He wants to make that burden manageable as you come to him like a child. Because we have that option, right? We can close up and we can stubbornly reject or resist against God taking that and giving us rest. Or we, in humility, can accept it. And we can say, yes, Jesus, okay, I, I, I want that. I want to respond to that invitation and accept his rest in your life. He longs to hear you breathe that massive sigh of relief. And he wants you to know what that means to find relief and rest in him as you allow him to give up these burdens and these weights. So what is it in your life? And what is it that God is speaking to you this morning? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God, we come to you this morning. And God, I know that you know each of our hearts, you know each of our lives, you know all the small and little details of who we are. Which means you know the big things too. So God, I pray that in these moments, as we hear this invitation, that we would respond. God, nothing is beyond your reach. Nothing is too small or too big for you to handle. And we thank you for this promise of rest. That as we respond to you, as we give up our our attempts to carry and handle life, as we give that up to be replaced by you, would you meet us there and would you give us the courage to do that? So God, continue to speak to us and continue to form your character in us as we respond to you. May we not stay the same, but may we continue to to know you and to seek you as we, as we experience your rest now and forever. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.